Hello, my name is Tertlund Penry. I'm a solitary pagan witch, I'm an author and the founder of the Wolf and Howl Press. And today I'm going to carry on from the previous chat um, a little bit about how we try to become wise. We're not going to become wise overnight. We're not aiming to try and be Einstein or anything like that. We're not aiming for genius, we're aiming for wisdom. And often, as I've said in the previous chat, wisdom comes of questioning things, of querying them, of saying, well, is this really true? It doesn't sound right to me. Now, that does not mean becoming one of the brigade that always say, you can't tell me, because that's as bad as being too gullible. But there are times when I get so exasperated because people just don't use their sense. And I'm going to give you a good example of this. I often come back to Facebook and things like that, and Twitter and social media because it's one way that people interact a lot these days but often you will see things put up um, don't open such and such email don't open so and so and it's some bizarre reason uh, it's usually because it's uh, going to take all your information and uh, drain your bank account um, or it's a virus or something like that but they post these things regardless and uh, you know, you're going round at the end and saying, look, I'm sorry, it's a hoax. Oh, oh, well, better to be safe than sorry. No, no, no. Let's go back for wisdom. Wisdom does not say better to be safe than sorry. Because you've got to look at it and say, what are these posts doing? They are spreading fear. They are spreading anxiety. One of the problems with that is that it takes your eye off the ball. It takes your mind off the main focus. Instead of focusing on what it is you should be looking at, you're looking over there at some completely bogus rubbish, which is easy to check. Thank you, Noah. <coughs> How do you check it? I'll give you some practical advice. If you ever have something like, don't open an attachment that says, oh, I don't know, X, Y, Z. Well, you, you copy that line and then you type hoax at the end of it and then you stick it in a search engine online and you see what comes up. <coughs> now, these things are not always true. Sometimes the hoax isn't a, uh, a hoax at all. Sometimes it is genuine. But the point is you have to start looking. People put up things, so-and-so has died. I hope it's not true. And I think, why don't you look... First, why don't you check it? Why do you put up rubbish and expect other people to check it for you? Do you see what I'm getting at? A wise witch, everybody gets caught out with these things occasionally, but a wise witch doesn't make a habit of it. A wise witch learns. She starts to check things herself. She starts to look into them. She starts to do her own research. I'll give you another example. Um, as a publisher. Hello, Noah. Hello. Can you see him? No, he's gone. Oh, right. Hello, Noah. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, hello, darling. As a publisher, I often have to edit books. And one of the ways... Arch. I don't know whether you can see this little bundle of trouble, but this is Archie. Archie, come and see him. Archie, sit down. Come and say hello. Come on. Come and say. Can you see him now? No? It's a pity because he's a very nice... Oh, there we are. Look. This is baby Archie. He's a smooth-coated St. Bernard and he's very sweet most of the time except when he's fighting with Noah. And as they're large dogs it can be quite sort of hair-raising sometimes. Now what was I talking about? Um... I've lost my thread. Right, well, I was talking about something. Um, I was talking about learning to check things and checking facts. And it is important. We do need to check. As an editor, that's right, I was editing books. What am I as a publisher? And they're off. We'll just try and work through this one. Um, and sometimes, uh, in a manuscript that somebody sent me and which I'm working on, something in the kitchen beeping um, you find a fact and I'll look at it and I think 
no, that can't be true. So I write on it and tell them, please, will you go and check this? Now, one of the problems with checking is that, uh, you know, you've, you've got to find a good source of information, but sometimes we find absolutely huge errors which have crept into other people's books and which our authors have used as a reference and we have to go back even further and say, look, this isn't true. And, um, I mean, yes, it's fascinating to do and it's interesting stuff, but it does make you wonder how on earth is so much bad information getting out there, because it is. There's more information available now than there ever was, and an awful lot of it is junk. So we really have to learn wisdom. All right, you may not have to edit or publish a book, I know that. But even when you're reading a book, stop, think to yourself, now is this really true? Could this really be true? I mean, I, I remember um, when I wrote Sacred Shadows, there was uh, a passage in one book I'd been reading um, by Charles Burlitz, of all people. And he was the chap who came up with the Bermuda Triangle Theory. And he's not exactly thought of as a very good source, but he, he came up in one of his books with, with a little uh, drawing from um, some caves in France. And he said this shows they were wearing um, proper clothing 14,000 years ago, whatever it was. Back in a period when most um, historians would say, well, they probably wore, in Northern Europe, they were wearing skins and, you know, nothing very fancy. Um, and I thought, well, this is too good to miss. I've, I've either got to prove this one or disprove it. So off I went and I, I managed to turn it up in some French academic journals. And I had to end up translating it myself. And, and there are all these wonderful pictures. I mean, what Charles Burlitz had put in his book was the, the, the sort of the thin end of the wedge. It was even better than I expected, and it is actually true. You can really track this stuff down, and it, it formed quite a big chapter in, uh, in my book, Sacred Shadows, because eventually I managed to track it down, and I, I turned up all these wonderful images and information that I hadn't expected, and it only existed at the time in French, apart from this one little fleeting reference in this other book, and one one illustration. But this is this is part and parcel of what we have to do. We do have to try to be wise. So start with things like Facebook. Be very careful what you pass on, what you listen to. See if you can find the hoaxes. See if you can find the junk. It has a very strange effect upon you. Maybe you'd like to tell me how it does affect you when you do find it. How does it make you feel when you realise you're being told a lot of nonsense over and over again? It's one of the things with wisdom, it's not an easy thing to do, not an easy path to take. But I shall finish there now. I'm sorry I lost my thread a bit in the middle. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.